Hello everyone, welcome to the sixth episode of Tea with Caro. Today with me I have Alchemy Yeti and Levi and we're going to be talking about the server merge coming up on the 24th. So Alchemy Yeti, how about you introduce yourself for my viewers? Hello again everyone, I'm Alchemy Yeti, Twitch streamer. I mostly play Blade and Soul and uh, other games. All right, and Levi? Uh, hi, I'm Levi. I make Blade and Soul YouTube videos, some streams around there and various other games as well are available on the channel. So yeah, that's what I do. Okay, perfect. So let's jump right into the, the topic at hand which is we've recently gotten news that they're merging Euro and Zulia together for the NA server and they're merging all three of the EU servers together into one so since we all play on the NA server let's talk about that what are your thoughts on this we'll start with Alchemy in general I'm fine with it uh, I think as I mentioned before I don't know the specifics in terms of like exactly how servers function I don't know the technical mumbo jumbo but in terms of like just getting people together, it's a good thing. Having two servers is kind of redundant for how small our game is. We don't have hundreds and thousands of people logging in. So you talk to someone, they finish the story, they do something and say, hey, let's do weeklies together. Oh, I'm on the wrong server. It's like now you we won't have that issue. We can all play together easily now. What about Levi? What do you think? Yeah, so I'm in the same vein on it. Uh, I think it's always good to keep your population for a game all together in one thing. Obviously, Blade and Soul's been out for what we're looking at six years now, five years. The NA version obviously been out less, but Still, uh, it's just a natural part of any MMO that's going to need to have server merges to keep the populations up. I don't think there was any population issue on the servers themselves, like currently, mm -hmm. but I think it does make sense to bring everybody together and really try and get one big, you know, buff, buffed server population for the up content. Okay. So I think it was a good move. We've read a lot of comments and people are speculating, especially on the forums, about oh how the server merge is gonna give more server load, it's gonna make there's gonna be lag issues, and other people are going more extreme. They're saying that the game is dying. That's why they're server merging to get players together to consolidate everyone, and then this is like the beginning of the end. Yeti, what are your thoughts about this? Didn't they say that last time? And the time before that, for every MMO, every expansion. Oh, WoW's dead. Oh, yeah. How, how many times has WoW died already? <laughs> <laughs> that poor zombie. They just keep bringing it back. The server merge scare people. I mean, they, they've jumped from MMO to MMO. I, I, I don't blame people for saying that, of course. The company can take a weird direction you don't necessarily agree with. Um, you've played a game in the past, two, three years ago, five years ago, and you know you see one server merge, two, three, down to one mega server. We're getting everyone together, and then the game closes down two months later. And it's like, shoot, darn, there goes our game. Mm -hmm. But Arkham's in a different situation. It's not like we know the content we're getting. It's not like the game was created here. It's in Korea, so we know that we have two more dungeons. There's a belt, bracelet, ET, mm -hmm. Act 10, more stuff after that, Unreal Engine 4. Like, they're still working on it. We know content we're actually going to receive, so we're not exactly in that same situation that other games have been in the past. Mm -hmm. And Levi, what are your thoughts? So I think the multiple server thing kind of should have died 10 years ago when games started moving away from it. So. The fact that it still existed in Blade and Soul to begin with is kind of like weird, I guess, to me. You know, there's so many games with their, their server systems that it's all one server. Everything was on the one server. Everybody played together on the one server and servers really weren't a thing. Having multiple servers and being account bound to the different servers. You look at more modern games now, they either have like a list where you pick from your server that's like your home base server, but you can still go to any server you want. You know, it seems more like an archaic system and it's honestly, it's about time that moved away from it. And I think, honestly, if they had pitched it as we're moving into the 21st century of gaming here, we're moving away from this multiple server thing and we're just consolidating to one to be in line with more current MMOs, they probably would have gotten a lot less uh, backlash on it. Yeah, mm -hmm. probably. I mean, they're, they're spinning it with uh, raiding, which technically, yeah, the only thing you can do on server is raid, really. I mean, Dungeons is all I The game currently is just Dungeons and mm -hmm. just raiding. So... If everyone's on the same server, I mean, I, I believe I could be incorrect, but I believe when they mentioned you before, they said the reason there isn't open world content and open bosses they decided to, you know, work into the game is because the game literally can't handle it. Everyone's aware of that. One major thing that bothered me with Final Fantasy XIV is there's two data centers in North America, meaning if you were all on the wrong one, you can't play with the other half of everybody else. Mm -hmm. I knew half people on one, half on the other. We literally can never play together at all. And I was like, why? That's so old school. Mm -hmm. Like, I understand way back in the day, it's like, yeah, I'm part of Dark Spear on WoW or whatever. It's like, yeah, server pride, server pride. If you mess up, ooh, you better not mess up. There's no server transfers. You're re-rolling, buddy. That was yeah. fun back then, but it doesn't work nowadays. Mm -hmm. So you're right. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I have a theory that both Zulia and Yura are actually hosted from the same data center, from the same server. 
and that they just partitioned the server into two uh, subservers. In that theory, I think that with the server merge, there's going to be no difference. Like the server is still going to be the same as it is. There's not going to be extra lag or extra anything. Do you have any other theories of this? Or do you think it's about as I'm if, saying? If I knew more about servers, I could probably go into it. But everyone I've talked to that's worked with servers, being into gaming, we know a lot of people from IT, whatnot. Mm -hmm. Most people are like, the way games work, the way servers work, that should not happen. There is one server. You're in Zulia, same thing. They're just, as you said, partitioned into left and right. Mm -hmm. They're going to be the same one. Your doesn't have better ping. Uh, Zulia doesn't have better ping. It's the same thing. Exactly. So I don't think that server load is going to be an issue. I think when, when we get the merge, it's just going to be more players. Since we're on the topic about server merging, I want to ask, how is the community in Eura? Because I don't know anything about the Eura server. It's fine. Nothing wrong with it. I mean, I know people are on Yura are like, oh no, Zulia sucks. And people on Zulia are like, oh man, Yura sucks. I want to go back there. There are toxic people on both servers. The mm -hmm. rage is probably coming from people that disagree with the clan or disagree with somebody and then switch servers and don't want to see them again. That's where the rage is coming from. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. I know I know people that are in that situation is the thing. Like I've, I've had them directly say, no, there's someone on that server. I don't want to see them. I don't want to see their clan. They were jerks. I, I know plenty of people that say Zuli is insanely toxic. And oh my God, I'm so glad I'm on Yura now. You guys are so cool. Everyone here is way nicer. I can actually get my weeklies done. And then people are like, yo, we're on Zulia. Like, like we're perfectly fine. There's plenty of really cool people over here. Like, you, mm -hmm. you didn't know where to look. Maybe you had you ran into one bad person. It happens. Yeah, I think that's true. It's just overhyped. A lot of people are like, oh, Yura is really toxic. But that's because they've only seen one side of Yura. And other people yeah. on Yura are saying the same thing about Zulia because they only see one side of Zulia as well. Hopefully with the server merge, we can spread a little bit more positivity because then a lot of the content creators are now all on one server, which opens up a lot of opportunities for, you know, collaborations as well as, you know, fun events that we can just host. Really? Kind of excited for that. Levi, let's talk Ooh. about what do you think the future of Blade and Soul brings? Obviously, we had this event right now, which I have very clearly voiced my, you know, I'm very unsatisfied and pretty mad about this event. Do you think this is like a sign that the director or like the direction that the game is going is going to be in this type of direction? Or do you think that they just made a mistake and that they're going to fix this and then uh, learn from their mistakes? What do you think, Levi? Yeah, I think this is just a, a one off. Mistake. And I honestly don't even think it's a mistake per se. Mm -hmm. I think they tried something different and it just fell on its face, mm -hmm. right? A major complaint about the events is that they've been really brain dead or they've been boring because they're not engaging. Mm -hmm. I mean, like the Candy Cloud event, you literally just stand there and jump over lasers for like five minutes. It's pretty mind-numbingly boring, you know? Yep. Mm -hmm. So I think they tried to do something that was a little different by creating the dungeon that required more mechanics. You had to pay attention to everything. If you frigged up, you lost and died. Mm -hmm. So I think that was an attempt, but they kind of went a little too far on tuning it because then they made it so that you need crazy DPS check, things like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Try and make it more targeted towards higher geared players that also have no reason to be running the lower geared event. Mm -hmm. So I, I think they their idea was like they were in the right mind. They just didn't do a very good job at executing. So yeah. I would like to hope that they will take this event. I don't expect any changes to come to it, mm -hmm. but I would like to hope that they take the event and realize the mistakes and then rework it later for future events. And Yeti, what about you? What do you think? I assume you had a, a video discussing what you did and didn't like about the event. I must have missed it. Yes, so I made a video two days ago. First of all, I explained why I was unhappy. The main reason I was unhappy was because I was not able to participate in the event. I was not able to get the second half of the currencies, you know, the um, resurgent emblems. However, like I have no problems with the with the dragon orbs, I think they're called, but there was no way for me to get resurgent emblems. But my gear is technically already maxed, like my soul is maxed, my heart is maxed, and I'm still struggling on this event. So if I'm struggling on it, I can only imagine how the majority of the population is, you know, they, they probably just can't even do the event. And that was my main issue. Like as long as you can trade time, like let's say that maybe if you clear the turtle fast enough if you kill it you get more tokens however if you can't clear it at least have like a consolidation prize like if you do 50 percent of his hp maybe you get a token fragment or half a token or something or a chance at a token yeah yeah exactly so Makes at sense. least people who want the event items can still do it they just get less tokens because they're not as geared they so, still complain though. Yeah, they would still complain, but to me, I feel like that is more <laughs> that's more fair. You know, it, it, oh, yeah, it gives course, people an opportunity. <laughs> 
right? It gives people an opportunity to actually participate in the event instead of just yeah, gating people and telling people, no, you can't do this event. Then it's like, what's the point of doing the event then? What's the point of hosting oh, this yeah. event if people can't do it, yeah. right? So that was, that, that, that's, yeah. Yeah, that was so what I talked about. But, you know, obviously, I'd like to hear your thoughts as well about this. Like, do you think this is just a mistake, like what Levi said, or do you think it's something bigger? I think so, yeah. Um, I, I don't know the exact release order in Korea. They might have had the new Soul at this point. There might have been a Soul reduction. I think they had Spirit BM. I don't know. Shoot, I can't call um, because I think ours so, Spirit BM. They might have had theirs back. When this event came out on Korea, they had Eternity Temple. So they had the new Souls and Eternity Temple yeah. already. And so, so we got too early. Exactly. We we got this event too early, and that's why only the top, top people can actually do it. I know people that are close, and they're like, shoot, I'm like seconds off from getting this thing. Why is it so... It, it's a bit overtuned. Like, conceptually, I agree with Levi. This is a really, really cool event, if you think about it. Mm -hmm. The easy part is, and I'm doing it, you might as well, mm -hmm. is go do Long by 1 to 3, which anyone can do. Yep. And then you go do the mausoleum, which everyone's called Desolate Mausoleum. Anyone can do that as well. You have 16 lives, and you can keep adding more as your weapon resets throughout yep. the fight. So mm -hmm. you technically can't die. You do that, you do that, you get three per day. I think you get two or so oils per character by the end of the event, which isn't so bad. And I yep. saw stage four and burning mausoleum as an extra part of the event, like Levi said, for over year players that are bored. And it's mm -hmm. like, well, shoot, none of these events apply to me. I already have all these gems. I have this, I have that, I have the other. Everything you can get from the quote unquote hard zone, hard zone, oh my God, hard <laughs> side of the event, mm -hmm. you don't really want because it's easier to get elsewhere. The gems you can get elsewhere easier. The mm -hmm. TT soul shields you can get elsewhere easier. The only thing people want are the wings. Yeah, exactly. I, I think it's because of the wings that people, well, at least that's me. You know, I'm upset because oh, I want too. the wings. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's fashion. I want fashion. Of yeah, I exactly. <laughs> exactly. I'm just like, gosh, I really want those wings. And that that's why yeah. I'm upset about it because I'm so close yeah. to doing it, but I can't. It's 65, dude. It's so many. It is. It, it is a cool lot. idea. Like, like, give me an event and then give me a harder version to either go faster or mm -hmm. just keep me interested. Like, yeah. I like it. It's a really cool idea, but like the problem is the hard. I, I was talking to someone who didn't even know the other currency existed because yet because understandably he saw the event. He goes to the panel. He goes, "Oh, okay, you can get wings, soul shields, and uh, gems." He stopped scrolling, and I'm mm -hmm. like, "No, keep scrolling. There's a second currency that's yeah. also orange and looks similar, but is not the same." He's like, yep. "Oh, oh, there's more to the event." I'm like, "Yeah." Yeah. He, he was exactly. telling people and other people like, "Oh, so we just skip this event?" I'm like, "No, no, keep scrolling, dude. For yeah. your oils." He's like, "Oh, shoot, I didn't even see those." It's, like, yeah, so unfortunately, put that currency first, which, you know, yeah. you can be rude to the guy if you want, but, like, <laughs> it's understandable. Yeah, like, obviously, my personal opinion and my, you know, I guess negativity has eclipsed the good part of this event. Because if you, if you actually have premium, you know you can get five sacred oils from this event on your main, and you can get two, almost three, on all your alts so you can actually get a lot of sacred oils from this event mm -hmm. which is pretty insane for like almost no effort because the uh the login reward as long as you've logged in i think it's like an hour and a half or two hours and then you it's get that, yeah. you get that event currency which is pretty crazy the event's pretty good as i said before but i'm still i'm still mad because i want those oh, yeah wings. i mean the the, <laughs> the actual structure okay uh i guess the content of the event is perfectly fine uh, i i don't like as levi said i don't want to jump and hold left click and shoot a gun those are my least favorite events yeah. i.e don't make me shoot i want to play my character i spent all this time learning how to play my character mm -hmm. and my alts let me play the game i don't want to jump and dodge the near automata balls and it was cute the first time <laughs> yeah. like not after eight runs and sometimes yeah. i'll do my wife's characters for her too and i want to like rip my eyes out she has 11 i'm like okay yikes i love you too <laughs> <laughs> maybe we can help out nc west here a bit what are the events that nc west has done before that seems to be you know balanced enough and still interesting enough for all people to do and that we actually enjoy doing can we think of any events past events that were interesting i mean i liked Keg Leg Jig was really fun. The Stoner Plug. Okay. Yeah. Because you actually have to play your character, and that shit was wild. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> the music and the. <laughs> that was hilarious. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, you have the lazy events where it's like just do your dungeons, do your dailies, mm -hmm. or do a dungeon, and then do like a weekly. Those yep. or whatever. You're already doing that. Yes. The event dungeons where you get to fight and not use a gun, I enjoy. Mm -hmm. So, like, mm -hmm. they're all. Ca realistically every event's the same thing they're all the same thing what are your it's, it's thoughts on like the realm rift supply chain like oh, i, I feel that like that was so much fun exactly i feel like realm rift supply chain seems to be the good balance between 
it's a little bit challenging, but you know, you still need to play your class and everything, but it's not like super brain dead. And I feel like, like if the revamped version. Exactly. Like if I if they go somewhere towards that direction, but maybe ramp up the rewards, like maybe have the drop rate for, you know, I don't know, poor haram pets or something that's really sought after. Like increase that drop rate to entice people to actually do it. And I feel like maybe something along that direction would be something that NC West could start looking at. What about How you? How much can they control though? Like, are they allowed to like mess with that much stuff? Like they, I mean, not to like knock down what they do, but they, they do just copy paste for the most part. Yes. They take so, events that, well, I mean, they, they didn't make the game. Yeah, so NC West is allowed to take whatever NC Soft gives them, but they're allowed yeah. to tweak the numbers and they're allowed to tweak the events. So for example, for this event, the one that we currently have, on the Korean version, it was a lot harder because they had their ET gear, because they had their new souls and stuff. Desolate Mausoleum had 900 million HP and Burning wow. Mausoleum had 1.8 billion HP. So it, it was a, it was even harder than what we have now, and they tuned it down significantly. So you know, I understand that they still they tuned it down a lot, but it's still to my to my opinion, I still think it's not enough. You know, especially I mean, realistically, people like to throw numbers out, but like think about how many people actually have almost max gear TD. Not alts, not people that have cleared it multiple times and they let their characters mm -hmm. join and then get geared up. Actual people that have a single character they consider their main. That are like TT ready. That are doing consistent. Is it is, is it one point three million DPS? To yes, one point three to just How, barely pass it. Yeah, that that's like dead on. How many actual players? It's not ten percent. It's way lower than ten percent. Yeah, it exactly. Is substantially lower than ten percent. It's the rage crazy. makes sense. Like I, I get it, and that that to me that is overtuned because as you said, people can't participate, but it's like ninety five percent of the community, probably more than that. Can't yeah, participate exactly. In that, in that part of the event, they can do the rest of the event. They can get their oils. They can do that nonsense. But like. I kind of showed off on stream and I, I did it like seven to eight times in a row. I'm like, y'all really want to do this? Do you want to kill this dude 45 times to get a single Octa? Really? Yeah, it's, 65 it's... times to get the, the wings. wings. <laughs> but like, do y'all really want to do that? Really? Yeah, it's it's That's so fun. Mind it's really time consuming with all the loading screens and whatnot. And you got to kill the first three stages to get the fourth stage. And then yep. again, and then again, and then again. <laughs> exactly. And you know, it's it's one token as well. Every single time. One to three. I ain't seen no gold pig. Yeah. I saw no gold pig, just regular pigs. But uh, yeah, Levi, what were your thoughts about like good events that we've had before that you'd like to see come back again? I would like to see stuff like the Realm Rift supply chain, and I've been poking through the comments over here that are coming up in the live stream. With uh -huh. a nice little bonus, I have that advantage. Yes. So, <laughs> seems to be one that viewers are also interested in, with seeing them rotate through older dungeons and do similar things that they did with Realm Rift supply chain and kind of make those older dungeons uh, relevant again. I think that would be a good idea. Yeah. Because as Alchemy Yeti had said, you get to play your class, so you're not picking up a gun and jumping over lasers. I hate those events. I loathe them. Mm -hmm. I, I don't even do them. They're just so boring. Yep. I can't be bothered. Yep. So the ones where you get to play your character still have to use your brain a little bit are enjoyable. That's my thoughts. I would agree on that one. I was hoping they I mean, not Naryu Labyrinth was that long one? Oh, yeah, that was a longer one. That might be a bit much. But dungeons like that, I, I I greatly appreciate that. I honestly, honestly, I was hoping the Po Dungeon was a test and they'd add that permanently. That mm -hmm. would have been fantastic. I would mm -hmm. love, you can only play your character, you can only be this strong, that's it. Doesn't go any higher than that. Mm -hmm. But how fun would that be if every dungeon had that difficulty and rewards to compensate the player? I would love that. They like, could do the old the, big four. Yeah, like this, this is how the dungeon functioned back then. You can't wail your way through it, you, no badges, this is how your class worked. I mean, after post awakening would be a bit weird or maybe you'll know, scale the badges down or something but like that'd be real fun like exp hmm. go back and say hey i mean you ain't gonna go y'all want to do wound dross and awaken necropolis but like <laughs> let's go do like yeti again let's go do you know poe and grandpa and all that nonsense like that'd be super fun i think that's within nc west's jurisdiction to actually mess around with the numbers and you know they're not changing anything like context wise they're just tweaking a couple numbers and like making that an event I feel like that should be within their power to do something along those lines. That's really all I wanted to cover. Do you guys have anything else you'd like to uh, add in or talk about during this podcast? 
Levi, what about your chat? Does your chat have anything that they want us to talk about or cover? Yeah, we got some we got some interesting uh, notes here about how to make earlier zones more populated. The new player's experience feel more like it's not ghost town. Unfortunately, I don't think our game can facilitate that. Our game is a single player story till the end. I, I don't think it's worth the effort to do that, unfortunately. Like, I, I totally get it. Because like in Guild Wars 2, you're running around. There are always players literally everywhere. All, mm -hmm. all times mining, doing events. There's bosses that like, there's like, big world boss like level 15 but like way way early on they mm -hmm. the game is literally designed around being in the open world our game is not designed around that it's like i it'd be, it'd be a cool idea but you fly through the story so quick you'd be done in like not even a week so it's like if they put all that effort into like revamping zones and having us go back it'd be to waste because we don't our level doesn't scale down so it'd be weird having like max level characters come to you know an early area well like level 16 is trying to kill it you you, you aren't even level 16 for that long i mean right. i know people are like oh hey go go do this dungeon no by the time you do that dungeon you level three or four times you level way too fast now mm -hmm. like you just by playing the game you outscale the content so it's like the when the game first launched i i liked the open world and everything because like you wanted to kill hujikar like a thousand times you wanted to go do those the, the green dungeons that most players don't know exist <laughs> i mean <laughs> <laughs> right yep <laughs> you need to get like samja's earring and all that nonsense just to upgrade yeah. all that stuff but you fuck you so fast now and you don't have the old hogman accessories that they don't matter a middle ground between what you saying alchemy as well as what the viewer said was have a middle ground have something for the for the level 60s like i'd i'd like to see an open world boss or open world event of some sort that comes up every so often maybe like four or six times a day where it gives more incentive for people to organize stuff and to do something in the open world. Something that just gets the community together. Yeah, I mean, the wife and I are playing Guild Wars on the side. It's a game I've been playing, well, technically since playing, oh my god, 2014, 2015? It's been mm -hmm. out for a while. That game does open world content. It's easy, it's really easy, there's almost no challenge there. But like, it's, it's cool. You get a whole bunch of people together, you run, kill a giant sandworm, and then, you know, it leaves and it comes back later. Everything, yeah. Everything's on a cycle, but like, it's fun. Yeah, exactly. And then, like, as long as there's, like, a good reward of some sort, it has a purpose. Like, people come in, even though it's not challenging content, maybe people do it because it gives moonstones. Or maybe it has yeah. a dynamic reward that gives, I don't know, some something sought out. Because, like, right now, a lot of people are complaining that we're being real, really gold-starved and material-starved and stuff like that. And I can see that affecting a lot of new players, a lot of free-to-play players. Like, it's not easy. This game is not easy to progress. And having more means to farm for materials or gain resources would be a welcome addition. Yeah, I mean, they could do, like, a hyper pinchy. He's not super, sh like, hard, but, like, you swing by, it scales mm -hmm. you down. That way, level, you know, max characters don't one-shot him. Mm -hmm. You're forced to only do, like, a cap of XDPS because you're only level, I don't know, 20, however strong we were there. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, you can kill him once per day. But you can kill him multiple times. You get the reward once per day. So yeah. you can swing by, super pinchy, then kill, like, the other pinchy, and then kill, like, the giant generals from the moonwater areas. That'd be kind of cool. Like, just, like, a, you can do it once a day and get, like, a nice reward, like, five moonstones or something. It'd be yeah. worth the hop from boss to boss. It'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That, that's they, what they could even do that with the current world bosses that they have, and just like you said, get a cap on your DPS that you do based on your level, but make the wheel of fate give actual useful items instead of yeah, exactly like something and a soul shield piece. Yeah, something yeah. like have that. Have you ever would seen Dude really Good. <laughs> I don't even know he looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Peak time is upon us. Okay, what? Yeah, I, I think it's a turtle, bird, right? <laughs> I, I I don't know. I thought it was I thought it was a bird. And I was like, no, it's a turtle. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. I think does the big bad beetle boss still drop a uh, lost stones? Nah, I haven't done him in. I year. have not done. I have not gone there for ages. I don't know. Same. I have no <laughs> idea. Oh, I I know people just AFK there and kill him because he dies like two hits, but. If they, if they got rid of it, we wouldn't even know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yikes. All right, Levi, anything else? Any burning yeah, questions so your chat Do you has? remember? This one's mine. I just thought of it while we were talking. Do you uh -huh. remember those surveys that you do when you were leveling a character? Yes. One of those was, <laughs> yeah. uh, what would you like to see added to Blade and Soul? And there was like mounts, housing, various skills or craft, uh, wood cutting, and that kind of stuff you see in typical MMOs. What are your guys' thoughts on those? Mounts, no, because it's not we don't have an open world game. I know people ask for mounts, but there's literally nowhere to use them. Yeah. Like I like mounts. I played WoW and I collected them. I collected hundreds of mounts. Like as many as I possibly could. Like I would just grind I mean I was killing the bird people for hours and hours to raise my rep and I got a bunch of mounts. I never used them, but I had eight more. Um 
the housing is always a fun idea. Wildstar did it fantastically. I, I think they're all under the same uh, house because it, it was NC owned them. So I was like, hey, you know, mm-hmm. they had apparently Wildstar had fantastic housing. So they could try to sneak that in our game. Mm-hmm. And then crafting and gathering is terrible in this game. So they could definitely do something with that. Like, I would think housing is an interesting idea i personally i'm i've never really cared too much about these things because i'm more about how my character looks because you're always staring at your character right but um for housing you know i'm open to the idea of like having a guild hall that would be really nice if there would be like a physical building for your guild where people could actually come in and check out and be like whoa this is so cool you know that everyone has like their own unique design and stuff that i would be open to Housing, I'm, you know, I, I don't, I'm very neutral on that. I don't really care too much, to be honest. Maybe, maybe customize Heaven's Reach? Yeah, I mean, yeah, having mm-hmm. having Master Heaven's now. Reach would be pretty cool. Like, each guild has a has its own version of Heaven's Reach. And, yeah, you know, yeah. you can invite people to visit your guild and stuff like that and see how the guild hall looks. And, you know, that, that I'm interested in because that is more of a community thing. But Could personal be. housing, you know, may, maybe for... For showing off reasons, it'd be nice, but you know, I'm, I don't really care too much about that. The guild halls could be like they are in uh, Warframe. You uh, build oh, things, dojos, build, yeah. yeah. Take turns, and your whole clan can put up buildings and create your own little rooms, and could that, be something that, very interesting. That would be Dude, really I, cool. I, I left our dojo alone for like a month. I came back, and someone just went nuts. Looks so good now. <laughs> I was like, nice. what happened here? <laughs> so cool. <laughs> It's like the hired a dude to decorate it. Yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. But yeah, that, that could definitely be something cool. And then, uh, well, I mean, it's actually fun because they they show off dojos on their yeah. the Warframe streams. They they could do that in our game. Yeah, exactly. That'd be fun. And then it's also they could, uh, not that I'm uh, advocating for them, but it's another revenue stream for them. I'm sure they could have uh, speed up timer charges like they do in Warframe. The same yeah. idea. Mm-hmm. Nobody complains about it there. So they're really looking to fund the project. Yeah, that's definitely. You can easily see people spending thousands of dollars to oh, build easily. a day faster than anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But anyway, I, I think that could be a pretty cool thing. I didn't even think about doing that, but that's a that's a pretty cool idea. Did, I'd was this... love to see what the Koreans want because obviously, if we ask for something, they're not even to see it. But like, do the Koreans care about housing? Do they care about mounts and uh, ways to customize your character in game? Because like, I like I love the outfits in this game. The fashion in this game is like on point. It's real mm-hmm. solid. Yeah. Let me customize more though. Like I, I know they go back and like change. Let me like the pants, the shirt, the shoulders. Like let me take pieces of outfits, mm. the shoes. Like let me take different. Pe- I, I'd pay for that. I'd gladly pay for that. Like I, I have, I don't know, uh, 200, 300 of those little hoo-haws. They just kind of pile up. <laughs> yeah. I, I haven't really messed with too many of them, but like there, there can be more. Because as you said, you look at your character all the time. It's like, like give me more options. Sometimes I don't want the neck fluff. Sometimes I want the neck fluff. Sometimes my shoes don't look so good. I want better ones. I know yeah. the wife when she judges outfits, she starts with the shoes and goes up. The shoes are gross. <laughs> she, she doesn't want. It. yeah definitely i'd like more customization because my character's outfit has always been the hermit outfit from uh mushin's tower and it kind of gets old that i can't recolor it like i want to recolor it i want to make it pink or something you know yeah I'm or having layers of- like a cape or something or like <laughs> there's so many things you could do with there like pull something back or put something else on like toggle like helmets on and off and I don't have helmets that would be pretty cool I mean, like yeah, just 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 are the, your character is you like it's a role playing game. People forget yeah. about that. Like, yeah. let me do more with my character. That's re- if you don't feel connected to your character, like mm-hmm. it's real easy to fall out of it and just not care. Yep, exactly. All right, um, Levi, last last question or last topic, and I want to wrap this up. Anything else? The last one on the list was uh, profession skills. So wood cutting, fishing. I know they had mentioned there being fishing coming uh, in future releases of the game. And the then they just actually that, already in the game that for that like mm-hmm. one day and then that was it so what, what are your thoughts on those types of things as either a added revenue streams or being incorporated into the crafting system that they have now yeti go ahead uh, i'm saying if you hit shift f1 the fish is actually already on screen oh it's a, it's already in the ui interesting <laughs> we, we, they're fishing the fishing is already in the game technically they have in korea uh okay. it's you literally just do that you just afk fish and you get moonstones and stuff back it's not amazing but like for afk i know a lot of us do that so yeah like just do do that where he is fish right in the middle of the screen yeah, like, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm totally cool with fishing like yeah add fishing add i can't tell you how many times like my friend and i would just shoot the shit in in chat in wow and he, he's fishing up like guppies and i was fishing up something else we we're just chilling just talking yeah. uh, and i'd be like running around collecting ore and i'd see some dude that was collecting it and not the horde alliance i kill him and then he'd kill me then i'd kill him and it was really inefficient but it was fun 
So it's like, you, I'm in the open world running around. So yeah, you just chill fishing, collecting stuff. Like, I, I like crafting systems. Our game doesn't really have one, honestly. Everything's a trap. They, they really need to go back and fix crafting. Mm-hmm. It is, a lot of people are used to crafting being something substantial. In Final but... Fantasy, it's the, it's an entire game. Their crafting is hardcore. Like, you mm-hmm. level a crafter. You, you don't also craft. It's like, I, I'm literally a crafter. It is a separate thing. There's rotations to crafting. It's insane. Yikes. Like, your whole, everything changes. It's ridiculous. Wow. But like... Don't go that far, obviously, mm-hmm. but give us so give us something else. Take out the trap options, make things cheaper. I mean, if you look at the price to craft the ivory scales, it's insanely expensive. It's it's an insult. I kind of want to like, see something similar to what Warframe has with uh, is it called Fortuna or something? Like they, they have their uh, open, the world thing. open world thing. Like I yeah, really I enjoyed Fortuna. that because you could just go in and you could be fishing, and there's like night and day, and then there's mining, and there's like dynamic missions to do. And like it seems running around. Yeah, exactly. It it seemed like, oh, I have nothing to do or I don't feel like doing anything. I'm just going to chill there and socialize with my friends on Discord. And there's like actively things that that you can do. You know, you're fishing all of a sudden. Oh, you know, this spawned. Okay, let's go fight that. Oh, let's go mining. And it's it's very dynamic today. We yeah. literally did the thing on my stream. Somebody needed help fishing, so I, I threw down the bait for him. I was done fishing, mm-hmm. so I left. And cool, he could pop in and out. He forgot his fishing rod. He left. Yeah. Then he came back, and then he forgot to equip it on my killer. <laughs> so he leaves, and then he equips it, but he comes back, and, and Cody and I are just sitting there fishing, and the killer comes back, I throw the beat down again because he spawned. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm going to go do something else. So I'm yeah. going to go do fissures while they were fishing. And yeah. then when he was done, they, they joined me in fissures, and then we left, and we got the people our loot. I did some mining on the side, and a mission that popped up. I walked yeah. by the exploiter orb. It was really cool. Like, it's it's, it's nice. It's a, it's a fun feeling that you can enter a world that's massive, run around, enjoy what you need to do, and then peace out like it's 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 it's, it's cool it's yeah. nice sense of community hanging out with friends i like it yeah i feel like that should be something that would be would help the community especially in blade and soul a lot more but right now we're really seg- segmented because it's just like oh we have our purple train you know only six people can join per on in, in a dungeon run but you have a lot more yeah. friends than six people and it's just like oh what do you do mm. now then you're gonna make two purple trains and oh it's just a huge mess right i want a place yeah, where i can that. just chill with everyone and just kind of do whatever right and that, that I would honestly be the best. think pushing UE4 could help that because our game can't handle that many people in one room or in the open world. It does mm-hmm. not function. It lags like crazy. And like, yeah. I, I don't want to see more of that because it'll frustrate people. I remember yeah. doing SSP when it was meta, crashing all the time. It was terrible yeah. before we got the uh, 64 client. It was really bad. I don't yeah. miss that at all. Mm-hmm. It was a cool concept. But like it was terrible. I died constantly. I lost all my prestige points as I was loading back in. I'd crash. I'd mm-hmm. kill the boss as it was dying. I would crash lose my points. It was terrible. Yeah. So it's exactly. like if if we can get UE4, and as they said they intended, they want to add more open world bosses, open world content. That is a massive amount. They could flip this game completely. They they yeah. add so much stuff because right now the game is as you said, it's F8. If you're not there, you're raiding. If you're not there, you're AFK and Mushin Sour. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that that's it. <laughs> Blade it's all in a nutshell. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm currently AFK at the Sorry Palace Garden. So hell uh... yeah. <laughs> yeah, meta. Uh, new meta. Screw new meta. Star. Yeah, new place to AFK, guys. <laughs> so that wraps up this episode of Tea with Caro. What is my outro? I gotta think about it. I totally forgot. Uh, oh. Something about like. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Check out Evil Duos Harm's channel and Alchemy Yetis. Yeah, sure. Okay, I-, I remembered my outro. Check these nerds out. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> okay and that's it for this for this episode of tea with caro hopefully you enjoyed the podcast if you did i would appreciate a subscribe as it really does help out my channel and as always thanks for watching i have left the social links for alchemy yeti as well as evil do us harm in the description below please do check them out they do make very good content as well and uh they yeah will. thanks for watching again what can i say except you welcome for the heat